not sure where this goes. You know, let's put my head inside and see. Dangerous patch. Where is Oops. Oops. Hi everyone and welcome back. Today's plan Madhugiri Beta. About 100 kilometers away. Quite a uh, difficult trek. Uh, dangerous in some places. So let's find out. The route that I'm taking is to Tumkur. So I'm heading past uh, the Nelamangla flyover. This road is quite heavy with traffic. The weather is looking a bit overcast. Let's see what happens when we get there. Okay, here I've uh, turned off the national highway uh, and it says there's uh, 54 kilometers from here to Madhugiri. So I got hungry along the way. Anugraha Grand. Bad decision. Half an hour to start serving. The sun is out as well. It was 9 o'clock now. So it's starting to get uh, pretty uh, nice in terms of scenery here. Uh, this region is, is known for uh, several uh, rock uh, hillocks which are trackable and climbable. One is of course uh, Madhugiri Beta where we are going. The others uh, seem to be uh, Evrayan Durga and uh, Siddhara Beta which are also pretty close by. Yesterday, I took my uh, booster dose of the COVID vaccine. I'm feeling okay largely, a little bit of a body ache, light headache, but uh, hopefully that shouldn't get any worse. I'm 10 minutes away from uh, the Madhuguri fort. See a good uh, view from here. Over there uh, is Madhuguri fort and you can just about make, make some of the details of the fort right on top of the hill. And so that's what we're going to be climbing today. Looks like we are just about reaching. I had to give my Aadhaar card and name and phone number at the desk over here and I've parked the car behind me. So right at the beginning there seems to be some sort of an ancient structure here. It seems to be the ruins of a kind of a shed. And uh, these carvings are very reminiscent of uh, the Vijayanagara style. It looks like some sort of a shed, a waiting shed or a, a marketplace. It's interesting. Though. So I'm at the entrance of the Madhugiri fort. You can see behind me. The fort structure and this fort is supposed to be situated on top of uh, the Madhugiri Beta, uh, which is a hillock uh, comprised of a monolithic rock. Uh, it says it's made out of cyclopean granite. I'm not sure what exactly that type of granite is, but this was built during the time of the Vijayanagara uh, kingdom by one of the Vijay Vijayanagara uh, local rulers called Hira Gauda. Uh, after that, it was conquered by uh, a general in the uh, Mysore army and subsequently it was handed down over generations and Hyder Ali uh, took the Sultan's father, took over the fort and uh, reinforced it and built several more structures uh, to strengthen the fort. So it's around 9.45, it means it took two hours for me to reach. It's quite sunny, uh, the rain clouds seem to have vanished. Just coming up to the first 
built up structure one of the fortifications you can see from down here so the views there are quite a few people climbing up to the top So the legend goes that when uh, Hiragoda, the uh, Vijayanagara ruler who built this place, was scouting for a location to construct a fort, um, one of the local shepherds lost a sheep, which went up the hill. And when that sheep uh, came back, it was completely wet with uh, precipitation uh, indicating that there was water up here whereas the city down finds it difficult to get water there's a scarcity of water so that's why they decided to build the fort up here Here we are going through one of the main fortifications, a gateway essentially to get past. You can see these carvings, I think they are mostly made out of lime and mortar. Um, supposedly a lot of these were added during uh, either Lee's uh, reign or control of, of this uh, fort. And you can see the main temple uh, fort there. There several watchtowers along the way. We have to take a road that provides upwards along the walls and go on top. There also seems to be a lot of structures here. The old structures which have fallen apart. And it's quite intric intricately made. You can see these arches. Kind of like windows. You can see there, there's, a, there's another tower. You try and head up there and see. Okay, this part is quite a inclined. Points. There are no proper steps. You have to hold on to these plants and granite and pull yourself up. So I'm up in that watchtower. See here, there is a, a deep hole here, which seems to go without an end. I'm not sure. If, uh, not sure if this was a pre-planned escape route or if it's more recent. It doesn't seem to have any kind of uh, construction reinforcing it. So it could very well be something that has caved in recently. Here along the wall, there is a small window-like structure. I'm not sure where this goes. Well, let's put my head inside and see. Yeah, it, it's kind of a room. Possibly used for storage and stuff and 
from here you can see the views are pretty amazing some kind of a rainwater harvesting system that they have built and i would imagine when it's full it could sustain quite a lot of water which can be fed down to the city below so it looks like there's a culvert there which redirects the water and that comes all the way down here into this for oh, this tank of sorts and then the tank continues this way and uh, aggregates the water there starting from here along the rocks and uh, they seem to have cut out these steps to facilitate tourists from going up and these railings are helpful but i'm told that on certain portions the railing is missing and the rocks can be quite slippery so we need to watch out for that See a nice lake there. Good view from here. And you can see there's water trickling down. This could be rainwater or some other sources. You need to be really careful because it can get really slippery. And once you slide, there's nothing to stop you from going down. It is quite a tiring climb. You can see some of the railings are coming apart and they've done a stupid thing to tie it up with barbed wire. I put my hand on this but luckily I didn't get cut. I just stopped along the way. Break. This is a good exercise for my heart. My heart is pumping. Once again, some tricky spots. You know, it's a good, slippery and full of water. But luckily there is a railing. Yeah, you can hold it and and walk past. There's no railing here. I think it's broken. You can see the railings and the steps behind me, but I'm pretty sure these are. Very recent carvings. You can see the marks of a machine that has cut out steps along this way. So, if, imagine in the old times, there would have been no steps here. Anyone going up or down would just have to climb up without any hand holding, foot holding for that matter. And it would have been quite a task if you had to do that every day. So, we're coming up to that dangerous patch. That is. Oops, oops. There is no uh, railings here to hold on, and you essentially have to brace yourself against the rock on this side and get past the stretch. For people with uh, a fear of heights, this is not a good patch. If you're used to it, I guess it doesn't really scare you that much. 
not as long as they are not expecting to go tumbling down. And me holding a camera in one hand is not really a good idea, I must say. It's interesting to see these trickles of water flowing down. And it makes me think that there's either some kind of a collection of water up there or there's a natural spring of some sort there. Oh look, there's a wall here. I wonder when this wall would have been constructed. And this wall kind of goes down, it's broken off from here. So possibly at some point there was a wall here which kind of made it easier to climb. That makes total sense. Otherwise it's quite a risky thing. We've come through what appears to be the last gate. I don't think there's any more gates. This must be the top there. That breeze has given way. It's kind of still. It is again getting quite tiring as I head up. Tracks. It's usually not a rushed trip. In the sense that you can take your time going up and take your time going down, which gives me enough time to explore little nooks and crannies like this. You take more time to appreciate things around, as opposed to if you were going in a group. that is the last stretch but obviously I was wrong you can see there there's a person standing right on top so there's quite a bit of way still to go seems to be the final leg of the climb hopefully seems to be at least about 60 to 70 degree incline climbing up. If you're not doing it regularly, just quite demanding. And there's no railings of the doors here. You just have to pull yourself up. I just met a group of kids over there and uh, as I was coming through that small tunnel-like structure my bag was scraping on the rocks above and the kids heard a sound like a growling sound which is actually my bag scraping against the rocks and they couldn't see me coming up 
and so they actually got afraid <laughs> and <laughs> got quite startled anyway they are local kids and they say they do this trek almost every other weekend this is their 10th or 11th time that they've been up here looks like finally have reached the top the summit where the the main part of the fort is like this is the main part of the fort and then here there is a structure with multiple rooms and uh, it's quite small in comparison to what i was expecting at least these kind of domes you not sure what this is there are two such domes I wonder if there's something underground. Oh, there's another one there. There seems to be a gate, that structure here. This is seems quite dark in here. This seems like a kind of a hall-like structure, possibly used for sleeping or cooking. Not sure. Or for storage. And there is holes on top. This is what we saw from below to let in the light. And you get quite spectacular views from here. Just look at that. Oh my god. Look at the lake. The superb views. See there, there's a tank with uh, a raid bed uh, that seems to be stocking uh, rainwater. See here the outlets for rainwater to to be channelized. Uh, right on top of the fort, they seem to have built this structure for collecting the rainwater, and then it kind of Channelized and sent out, and then collected down there. So the water trail is like this. It goes down here. You can see a pool of water there, and it continues past here. And it either goes along the wall here, or trickles further, seeps across the wall, trails down there, and then goes. To those pools down there. So I'm finally on top. And, uh, that's the fort behind me, and I'm just sitting and appreciating the view. This is quite an amazing view. And if it was a little more breezy, it would have been even more enjoyable. So 
So I've just walked around the fort. Seems to be a track which is off the beaten path, which kind of leads above the fort. Oh, is it above? Oh no, we're back here. So I'm not sure what this was meant for. I just heard somebody mention that this part was used to store grains, kind of like a granary. And there seems to be a, a room at the corner. Now just imagine, sometime in the past, it's very likely that somebody like Hyder Ali himself may have stood in this exact same spot that I am standing in right now to get a view of exactly the same scenery. Of course, it would have been different then, but that's very much a possibility, and that's quite amazing, isn't it? So it's been about two hours since I started the trek, and I've already come on top and checked out the fort that is behind me. Uh, it would be really good if they could put up more information about its history and what each part of the fort was used for. But uh, just took a small break, admired the scenery, and now I think I'll begin my trek back down. I don't think it should take two hours back, probably another hour or so. I've just gotten back from the trail. Uh, it took me about half an hour to 45 minutes to come down versus the two hours that I took to go up. Uh, it was quite straightforward, but some patches were slippery uh, and you have to have the correct footwear. I was lucky because the whole way was quite dry, but if it was raining, I think it would be quite a difficult uh, trek coming back now. Uh, again, I uh, enjoyed the trek. Uh, it is slightly difficult, uh, but not too much. I've seen old people and kids as well going up there. Uh, so obviously, it can't be that difficult. Uh, but it is quite tiring. Um, and now I think I'll head back to Bangalore. See you in the next video. Bye.